But let me turn to North Korea, Paul, because we've got obviously these tensions here, which have really ramped up in the last few months. In an interview this week, White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon claimed, quote, there's no military solution to curbing the country's nuclear ambitions. But then yesterday, Secretary Tillerson rejected that notion. Listen to this. Well, I don't really have a comment on uh, what Mr. Bannon's remarks were. We have been quite clear as to what the policy and the posture towards North Korea is. We are prepared, our, we're prepared militarily, we're prepared with our allies uh, to respond if that is necessary. That is not our preferred pathway. It is only prudent that they fully understand the consequences should they make a bad choice. Paul, your thoughts? Well, I want to congratulate the Secretary of State for the ultimate in throwing shade on what <laughs> someone has said publicly. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know what else he could have said uh, because it, it sh this should not be public, any kind of disagreement like that. Certainly everyone knows that the last thing the United States wants to have to do is to get into a shooting war with North Korea that will result in millions of South Koreans dying. It's, it's very hard to imagine that not happening. I've only heard one military expert talk about how within 15 minutes you could wipe out so much of the North Koreans' artillery that you wouldn't lose that many South Koreans. I, I don't know if that's true. It seems to me it's not true. Not many people say that. But publicly, these things should not be discussed because the North Koreans have responded to a tougher administration. Uh, what the Secretary has said recently about coordinating our activities, making clear that we are uh, uh, standing firm, that we won't tolerate the provocations or the threats, and that we will ultimately do what we have to do if uh, there is a, an imminent threat. It's important to keep that up, uh, especially in a regime that's so starved of information and can't trust anybody. They need to constantly hear the same thing from the United States and our allies. And uh, so I hope we're back to that and making it clear where we stand. The Wall Street Journal actually has an editorial about this today saying, um, and I'm paraphrasing, striking and troubling was Bannon's willingness to undercut Mr. Trump's policy of pressuring China by saying there's no military solution on North Korea. Bannon cold called mm -hmm. this writer at this left-leaning publication and then insisted after the fact that it was off the record, which is balderdash. The Wall Street Journal writes that if Mr. Trump retains Mr. Bannon after such a public declaration of disdain for his own colleagues, the president will risk other departures. If he doesn't get rid of Bannon, if he rejects such a request from Chief of Staff Kelly, the Chief of Staff will have to wonder whether he can do his job. Mm. So it's not about the, Mr. Trump and how he speaks to the American people on Twitter. It's about are you going to allow one of your advisors to undercut the authority of multiple people in your administration? Yesterday I saw that Congressman Peter King called for Bannon's resignation. He said Trump needs to get rid of Steve Bannon. This was almost a I dare you to fire me mm -hmm. interview. Right. I, I mean, I think the only right. argument for Bannon is that there's nobody else in the president's inner circle who's a political animal, That's right? True. Kelly's not a politician. McMaster's not, of course. Uh, Tillerson, Mattis. Who, who is the political brain? Who's Axelrod? Who's Karl Rove in the administration? And it's really not anyone other than Bannon. Maybe Kellyanne Conway, who I think is a tremendous manager. Uh, but there's really the bench is thin. Mm. And who else in the administration does he have that's real conservative? Right. Because you've got a lot of uh, liberals. You know, I mean, look at uh, a lot of his cabinet who supported Hillary Clinton or supported uh, President Obama. What do you think, Paul? I agree with what Andrew said. I've thought from the beginning that the presence of Steve Bannon was not just low politics that it assured uh, the president's supporters but it was higher politics it was like the voice of Rove or Axelrod or whatever it was someone that uh, got the president's overall views about his role in, in, and our role in the world having said that though um, I, I think that voice is usually quiet it's not one that gets a lot of attention for what it's saying uh, and one other thing I would say though is when it comes to foreign policy the president's not surrounded by a bunch of Goldman Sachs liberal elites or anything like that. These are people that get the security of the United States and they're very smart. And so somehow a consensus needs to come out of it and uh, hopefully that'll be done behind closed doors a lot more. Well, the Wall Street Journal points out also that you can call Gary Cohn a Goldman Sachs Democrat, but he's assembled a top-notch free market economic policy team who wants to get tax reform done and cut taxes for all American businesses. So. He is uh, walking a True. different talk than just being labeled a 
Goldman Sachs That's Democrats. Good. Yeah, okay, great. Paul, good to see you. Thanks so much sure. for weighing in. Paul Bonicelli there.